God for his goodness to us tonight. Amen. I want to welcome everyone. Glad you're here tonight. What a, a blessing it is to be in God's house with God's people. Amen. And we certainly are thankful for all of our honored guests that are here tonight. We'll introduce them and uh, make them feel right at home in just a little bit. But uh, let's stand if you will. We're going to ask the uh, Lord to bless the service. I ask God to work in our hearts tonight. And uh, we have some special treats tonight for you. And I know you're going to enjoy them. Amen. Brother Tony, come and lead us in prayer, then lead us in a song. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the day. Lord, what a great day it's been. Father, I just thank you tonight that we live in a land where we're still free to come and to worship. Yes. And Father, we give you the glory for that. And Father, tonight, Lord, I pray that everything we do, Father, would put a smile upon your face. Lord, you would be happy. Father, we would uplift the Lord Jesus Christ that Father, might point all folks to him. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the preaching tonight, Father. I pray for power. Lord, I pray for wisdom of the word of God. Lord, I pray that you'll just anoint. And Father, as the spirit of God works in the midst of this building tonight, Lord, may our hearts be submissive. Father, may the word of God find fertile hearts, soft hearts. Lord, that you can work. Father, to change us and to mold us and to make us more like Christ. Lord, to give us that mind of Christ that we so need. Lord, to go forth this week. Lord, to share with folks uh, the love of God and what he can do for them and how he saved us and what he wants to do for them. Lord, just bless. Father, meet each need. And Lord, we'll give you the glory for all that's accomplished. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Take your hymnal and go to page 83. You're going to see the song again and say, what's going on with the, another Christmas carol? But our memory verse, if you know, was in Luke 2 this morning. and uh, uh, We're going to sing page 83, verses 1, 2, and 4. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn. On earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to Christmas music all year long Amen. and uh, to make it worse Jared got her this Bluetooth box and it's even louder now when I walk in the house sometimes uh, it's louder and so this is right up her alley I mean how many of you guys listen to Christmas music all year long oh, okay I see, see a few hands raised in there all right I guess that's all right I guess she's more normal than I thought all right well let's go Lord in prayer and uh, ask the Lord to bless all from Brother Dale would you please lead some prayer tonight Yes. 
Yes. Amen. again and go to page 627 627 just remain seated we'll sing verses 1 2 and 4 1 2 and 4 there is a name I love to hear I love to sing its worth it sounds like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth Be 
because he first loved me. Amen.
announcements. And uh, don't forget these flyers down here um, for our first responder appreciation event next Sunday. And I uh, had a few more folks give me some gift cards tonight. Appreciate that. And uh, we're just going to try to shower them with some uh, things like that. And these guys eat at Chick-fil-A and Dunkin' Donuts and uh, all that kind of stuff. Firehouse, uh, anything like that, I'm sure it'll be a blessing to them and uh, encouragement to them. And so if you can try to remember that by Wednesday, that'd be helpful. And uh, we'll just see how many we got here and take them, divide them up as we, as we see, them, see them here. That'd be great. So please remember that. And don't forget these sign-up sheets down here. One is for the uh, fellowship at our house on Friday. And once again, we're trying to celebrate uh, this 50th anniversary for Pastor Robin. And uh, just a little card shower, and uh, we'll have some cake and ice cream, and of course we'll have some barbecue and mac and cheese, and I think we've got some folks signed up for baked beans and uh, deviled eggs and all that good stuff that goes along with it. And so just sign up so we can know how many people's coming, and we'll make sure we got enough food, and that'll be great. And don't forget, we're in this Phil America event. It started yesterday, goes through the 16th. And so this is just a, a, a boost to try to get out the gospel and uh, pass out gospel tracts, try to encourage us to do that. And so we placed uh, a little bit extra uh, gospel tracks in the foyer on the table there, as well as on the, uh, the platform here, the steps. And so you can grab those uh, on your way out and try to use it this week. Several different tracks there to use. So uh, please take, take advantage of that. And then, um, of course, Recognition Sunday is a normal Sunday next week uh, as far as times. And uh, we won't have a meal after the service. But we'll have uh, Mike and Leslie Blackburn in, I've told you. And these folks are going to Bolivia as missionaries, so they'll be presenting their work. And Mike's a policeman, so he'll be, he'll be preaching that morning and just, uh, just encouraging these, men, these folks that are here, men and women that are here. Be praying for a rally in the valley. And uh, we should bathe these things in prayer. Had a great meeting last month. Had Brother Alton Beal coming this month from Ambassador Bible College. So be praying for that meeting. There is a sign-up sheet down here for the men's advance uh, at uh, Timberidge Bible Camp. And so that's the 21st to the 23rd. The cost is $200 for that. And just all kinds of stuff going on with that. And then you see all these uh, things going on in the month of October. Please make note of that. And then um, congratulations to John and Stacy on their anniversary. All right? All right. But Tony, you come listen to one more song. Take your hymn and go to page 51. Page 51. Let's stand again. Page 51, verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of woe, it will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth. And joy of heaven. Take the name of Jesus ever as a shield from every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Verse 4, at the name of Jesus bowing, falling prostrate at his feet, King of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Tony's going to come and sing in just a moment, and uh, when he's finished singing, Brother Floyd Repass is going to come and preach for us. Uh, some of you have commented on my voice. My voice is never great. I understand that. 
uh, I probably got a good radio voice, you know, where you can turn it down real low. But anyway, uh, but uh, I don't know what I've got, but some sinus drainage or whatever it is, and I'm not going to make you endure that tonight. So Brother Floyd's going to preach for us tonight. Tony, you come sing for us, and Brother Floyd, you come and preach. Amen. I never say anything before I sing, but this song tonight's about prayer. And one thing that marked my daddy's life was prayer. Uh, I never went by his door at night. He was down on his knees. And uh, every Sunday morning, four men text me, praying for me as I teach. My Savior's making intercession for me on my behalf all the time. Don't take prayer for granted. Somebody's praying, I can feel it. Somebody's praying for me. Mighty hands are guiding me to protect me from what I can't see. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, somebody's praying for me. Angels are watching, I can feel it. Angels are watching over me. There's many miles ahead till I get home. Still I'm safely kept before your throne. Cause Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe your angels are watching over me. Well, I've walked the barren wilderness where my pillow was a stone. And I've been through the darkest caverns where no light had ever shone. Still I went on, cause there was someone who was down on their knees. And Lord, I thank you for those people praying all this time for me. Somebody's praying, I can. Somebody's praying for me. Mighty hands are guiding me to protect me from what I can't see. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, somebody's praying for me. Somebody's praying for me.
it's, it's good that he's better looking than Willie Nelson. All right. Well, it's good to be here tonight, and I'd like to start off by saying it's good to have Kippy and Tim with us. Uh, Brother Tim, uh, he and the pastor are pretty close to the same age. Of course, he's got white hair like that. I don't know if Kippy had anything to do with that. Maybe. I don't know. But um, he's got a young man with old hair. And, uh, of course, Robin, young lady, 50 years. Boy, I tell you, you got her young, didn't you? Uh, yeah. That's the same way with me. Uh, I got mine really, really young. And uh, let me say that I, I appreciate you folks praying for me back uh, April, May, and June. I had some physical problems and still every once in a while, you know, it, it comes up. And uh, I believe prayer uh, works. And uh, prayer is why I'm here tonight, I believe. Uh, I know that they kept kept saying what was wrong with me and all of that, you know. And uh, the hospital here and then the one over in uh, UVA, they all agreed that, that was what was wrong. And then they did the CAT scans and no, they couldn't find it. And I had, I think, about five CAT scans during that period of time. But I appreciate your prayers. I believe that's what did it. And enabled me to be here tonight. Love you, preacher, and, and uh, Miss Robin, and they're precious to us. And uh, they've made our move here to Virginia a little bit better. And uh, we've enjoyed fellowship with them, and uh, just the times we can be here at the church. Of course, I, I we go over to Crossroads a good bit. I've been visited a little bit up at uh, Faith Baptist. One thing about retirement, preachers, you can get around and visit a little bit, you know, and do what you were never able to do while you were preaching. But uh, about uh, 54 years as an active pastor, and I really enjoyed every minute of it. Even the bad times were good, and the Lord blessed me, and I appreciate that. Well, 2 Kings chapter 5, if you'll turn there. And uh, I was thinking about these little boys that were... Uh, playing together one day, and uh, one of them said to the other, he said, uh, uh, my dad, you know, he can scribble a, a few few words on a piece of paper, and uh, he said he calls it a poem, and they give him $50. The other little boys asked him, and said, my dad, he, he can scramble some words on a paper. He calls it a song, and they give him $100. The other little boy said, well, asked him, and I said, my dad is a preacher. He said, he'll preach a sermon. It takes eight men to collect the money. (laughs) Got the right idea, doesn't he? Got the right idea. Like a little girl, she she whispered uh, to her her mother at a wedding. She said, why has the bride got on a white dress? Mother said, well, white is a color for happiness. And said, this is the happiest day of her life. And she thought for a minute, she said to her mother, said, then why does a groom have on black? (laughs) Couldn't understand that. Uh Joan and Harry were cleaning out their attic and uh, they come across a a ticket where they put a pair of shoes in the shop to be repaired 10 years earlier. They just happened to find it he said, wouldn't it be good if we would go down there and see if they still have that pair of shoes? So they did. They went to the shoe repair shop and went in, gave the man a ticket. He looked at it, walked back in the back room, stayed a few minutes, come out. He said, they'll be ready Wednesday. <laughs> so I thought, that's, that's, that's pretty real, isn't it? That's pretty, pretty real. Well, one, one more, then maybe I'll know what to do. Uh, Said the construction crew uh, arrived at work one day and they realized that uh, they had forgotten to pack the shovels. So irritated foreman, you know, he called back the office and asked if somebody could bring the shovels down. Well, a man was listening on the short wave and heard it, and he come across. He said, "Well, until the shovels get there, you can lean on each other." <laughs> That's about right, isn't it? Well, 2 Kings chapter number 5. 
And it starts off, uh, now Naaman, captain of the host, the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a, a leper. Now the captain of the host of the armies of Syria, it tells us right here, his name was Naaman. Very, very familiar to all of us who know the Bible. Uh, even a little child who's been to Sunday school a few times knows the term Naaman the leper. And uh, so the Bible says uh, he was a great man, uh, but he was a, a leper. Uh, he was a mighty man, but he was a leper. Uh, he was a good man, but he was a, a leper. Now, you know, there, there, there's a lesson that one little line there in verse 1 where it says, but he was a, a leper. You know, leprosy uh, is a symbol of sin. Uh, good people, you know, are also uh, sinners. Uh, it, it may be said of many people today who, who are not saved, he's a good man, or, uh, uh, but, but he's a sinner, you know. Uh, you could say of him, he's a mighty man, but he's a sinner. And uh, he, he is a powerful man, uh, but he's a sinner. And so Naaman the leper, uh, he wanted a cleansing. And uh, he wanted to be healed from this leprosy uh, more than anything else that you can imagine. Verse 2 says, The Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. In other words, uh, Naaman had a little maid uh, in his household. And the Syrians had fought against Israel and in so doing had brought back captives. And uh, one of those captives was a little maid who attended to the wife of Naaman the leper. And verse 3, she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him uh, of his leprosy. In other words, this little maiden, I imagine as she was working around the house, would constantly watch her master come and go uh, with his leprosy. Maybe she saw the awful sores coming out uh, on his hands, or maybe she saw as he walked the disease spreading across his entire body. Maybe she smelled the obnoxious odor that came from the sores that came from the leprosy. But no doubt she often said, I wish that my master could be healed from leprosy. Now, Naaman, no doubt, was willing to pay any price. He was willing to go anywhere, perform any task in order to be healed of his leprosy. Verse 3 again says, She said to her master, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. One day this little maid uh, she said, well, I, I, I wish that my master could just uh, go to a preacher that I know back home. If she could just go and visit this preacher. His name is Elisha, and I believe that my preacher could help my master. And you know, that's something that anybody can do. Uh, you may not preach a sermon from the pulpit. You may uh, not be able to sing a solo from the pulpit. But you can say, why don't you come and hear my preacher? I'd like for you to come and hear him preach. I wish you'd just go to church with me. Maybe if you'd just come and visit and hear my preacher preach. Most of you here tonight, uh, you're saved because you heard a similar uh, sentence. Uh, come, come to church with me and hear my preacher uh, come and listen to the message. I, I, like to, I thank God for Pastor uh, Jim Franklin over in Beckley, West Virginia, back 60 years ago. I thank the Lord for him. But I'm more thankful for Eddie Witt, who was a banker there, that kept saying to Jackie day after day after day, why don't you come and hear my preacher? 
I'd like for you to visit our church and listen to our preacher. And uh, this little lady, she said to, to Naaman's wife, I, I've got a preacher back home and I just wish my master, I wish, I wish Master Naaman could just get to him. If he could just uh, get to my preacher, I know he'd do something for him. Now, uh, Naaman had tried everything he knew to do and he was willing to try anything. So he decided to, to go and see Elisha. Now, Naaman was, was, was a rich man, a mighty man. He, he was a powerful man. So what did he do? Well, uh, he got chariots together and he filled them with, with riches. Uh, he got a big caravan and took off to see the preacher over in Samaria by the name of Elisha. Now, Elisha had been recommended by the little maid of Naaman's wife. Verse number nine tells us, uh, so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and he stood at the door of the house of Elijah. Now, can you imagine how Naaman felt as he stood at the door of this preacher? And uh, Naaman thought certainly Elijah would just come out and stand before him and maybe he would call on the name of his Lord, uh, his God. But the Bible says in verse 10, Elisha sent a messenger unto him. He didn't come out at all. He sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again uh, to thee and thou shalt be, be clean. Now, he was expecting some great healing spectacle, you know. He was expecting something to happen. However, Elisha simply sent out a messenger there that said, go and wash in Jordan seven times. Now, you have, if, you, if you've been to Israel, if you've seen the Jordan River, uh, you'd have to understand exactly, you'd have to see it to understand what it's like, in other words. Uh, you'd have to see it. The, the Jordan River is nothing but just a floating uh, mud hole really that's about what it amounts to and uh, it's just a creek but over in verse number 12 the Bible said uh, uh, the name is said are not uh, Abana and uh, uh, Parpares rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel in other words back home we've got some tremendous rivers you know much better than the river Jordan much better than the rivers of Israel why can't I just wash in them and be clean. And so he turned and went away uh, in a rage. Now, his servants came near and they spake to him and uh, they dared to do that. My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather when he saith unto thee, wash and be clean. Huh? There's only one way. Listen. Uh, his servants were wiser than he. There's only one way for Elisha, uh, uh, for Naaman to be clean. Only one way for him to be rid of the leprosy, to be healed. And by the way, there's only one way for a sinner to get healed also. Uh, God, God doesn't have two plans of salvation. Have you ever heard people say, well, why do I have to receive Jesus? And why do I have to put my faith in what Jesus did for me? Well, that's God's plan. Amen. That's the way God worked it out for us. All right. I remember visiting a fellow in Hillsboro, North Carolina one day. I used to go see him very well. His wife was a member of our church there in Nevin. And uh, I asked him if he was saved. No. I said, well, aren't you interested in going to heaven? He said, well, I'm going to heaven. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, listen, if God don't want people like me in heaven, who does he want there? <laughs> I said, God wants sinners in heaven. This man had been telling me how great he was, how good he was, how upright, what a citizen he was. And, and he said, if God don't want people like me, who does he want? I said, he wants sinners, amen? God wants sinners. Uh, somebody said, well, why can't I just join the church? Wouldn't that be all right if I did that? That's not God's way, that's why. That's not God's way, amen. Somebody said, well, why can't I just live a good life and go to heaven? Because that's not God's way. You see, God's way is by Jesus and nobody goes unless they go that way. I mean, that's the only way. Finally, Naaman gives in and goes down to River Jordan. There in verse 14, then when he down, dipped himself seven times in Jordan 
according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Well, I can just, I can just see him now. You know, he goes down the first time. He comes up probably dirtier than he was before. And uh, Naaman said, well, look at me. I'm no better off than I was before. In fact, I'm, I'm dirtier. Uh, that's all you see that in Hebrew, you know, where he, where he talks that way to himself. But anyway, uh, you don't see it in the English. You have to read into it, you know. And, and I'm sure his service must have encouraged him, you know. Go down the river again. And so he goes down a second time. Now, can you imagine this, this great, mighty man? I mean, he was the Eisenhower of his day, you know, the Schwarzkopf of his day. I mean, he was a great uh, general in that day and, and all of that. And he goes down into the river three times, then four times and five times, six times. And he goes down seven times. And when he comes up after that seventh time, he's completely cleansed Amen. from the leprosy. I mean, completely clean. You, you can't imagine what he would do. I mean, here's a man with a death sentence. And all of a sudden, he's been cleansed from that leprosy. And, and listen, we say he's a rich man, a wealthy man. And the first thing that he does, uh, return to the man of God. Now, look at verse 15. He returned to the man of God, he and all his company, he came and stood before him and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Now, uh, he, he was saying what any rich man would say, you know? Uh, how, how much do I owe you? I mean, you've done a great thing for me. Uh, how much can I give you? And Elijah, he, let me give you some gift. Let me bestow something. And he, and he went, I, I, want, I just want to pay you for what you've done for me. And you know that's a natural thing for, for a person to do when he gets, gets saved. I mean, listen, if your pocketbook doesn't fly open when you get saved, you probably need to go down again. Amen? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't get it the first time, right? Amen. I mean, it's just natural. I mean, tight watch, skin, flint, uh, penny pension. They don't know anything about salvation, being saved and, and the gift of God and being able to give back unto the Lord. Naaman came up that seventh time and he looked at his body. He saw that his hands were, were cleansed and there was not one bit of leprosy in his body. And he returned to the man of God and he said, take a blessing. I pray thee, uh, let me pay you something. But Elisha said, what I have is not for sale. We're not for sale. I, I serve God because I love God. I help you because I love man. How about that? And I'll not take your money. All that's in verse 16. As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. He urged him to take it, but he refused. Now, Naaman couldn't understand it. I mean, he scratched his head. He, he got back in his chariot and uh, took his caravan, caravan and they headed on back to Syria on their way back. Well, Elisha had an assistant pastor. And uh, now not all assistant pastors are like Gehazi. But after Naaman had gone, uh, Gehazi said, Master, do you know what you've just done? <laughs> do you realize what, what you have just done, uh, you let the richest man in Syria get loose without giving a dime. You let him go without uh, any contribution whatsoever. He said, look, look, I'm, I'm going to go catch him and get some kind of gift from him. Elisha, uh, he said, no, no, that, that's not our business. There is a rewarding time coming, but this is not the time for reward. This is not the time for praise. This is the time to serve. And, uh, well, Gehazi, he slips out, you know, and they took after Naaman. Look over in verse number 21. So Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him, and he said, is all well? Of course, Gehazi said, all is well. My master has sent me. Uh, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men, the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver 
and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bare them before him. And uh, when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand, bestowed them in the house, but he let the men go and they departed. In other words, uh, he, 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 he said, uh, we'll, we'll take a gift, you know. Uh, Elijah sent me to tell you that he made a mistake, you know. See, verse 22, my, my master hath sent me. He's a liar, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, he's a liar. But my master hath sent me. There in verse number uh, 22. And uh, in verse 26, uh, El Elisha said to him, Went not mine heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? In other words, Eli Elisha, when Gehazi came in, Elisha said, Hey, where have you been? Where, 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 where have you been? Something like that. Well, he said, I've not been any place. I've, I've not been any place. I've not done anything wrong. <laughs> he, he lied about everything, didn't he? Huh? And, and Elisha said, my heart followed you every step of the way. He said, I know where you've been. You've been to Naaman. You've taken money. Then verse 27, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee unto thy seed forever. He went out from the presence of leper as white as snow. Do you see that? Isn't that something? He, he, the leprosy of Naaman shall cleave unto thee. He's talking to Gehazi. And thy seed, not only you, but your seed forever. And he went out from the presence of the leper as white as snow. He walked out with the same disease which Naaman walked in with. Every one of us, think about it, will one day stand before your master. You ever think about that? You ever think about it? The Bible, the Bible says there he went in, verse 25, and stood before his master. And Elijah said to him, Whence comest thou? He said, Thy servant went no whither. <laughs> where, where are you coming? I haven't been anywhere at all, he said. Every one of us will stand before our master. L listen to me. Men, women, young people, you, you think about it. Every single one of us will one day face Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Every, every single one. Doesn't matter who you are, no matter what age you are, you are an eternal being and you will face Jesus Christ one day. And for these these many, many years, I, I think 54, 55 years, uh, I, I've been pleased to preach the gospel. And, and I've, I've lived with that thought, we have to one day face the master. I mean, you think about that. One day, I'll have my name called and I will look on the face of Jesus. Huh? That, that's why every, every time I preach, before I, I walk into the pulpit, I say, oh my God, help me. Help, help me not to preach to please men. Amen, right. Help me not to preach to please people. Someday everything I say, I mean, I'm talking about all the intents of my heart. All of my motives will be tested when I look face to face with Christ, my Savior. That song says, face to face with Christ my Savior, face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. I must face my master. You, you must also. That's why you ought to watch how you live. You know that? You're going to face Jesus one day. That's why we have to be careful of what we say and where we go and uh, with whom we go. And, and uh, that's why we ought to be careful what we see with our eyes and what we hear uh, with our ears. Why? There's going to come a day, and by the way, it's sooner than, than you might think it is, when, when you must enter and stand before the Master. Let me ask you, what's going to matter then? Hmm? Think about it. 
What else matters when you stand? Though I, I must face my, my, I must give an account for all my preaching. I must be faithful. Each of us must face him once, but the saved and the unsaved will, will not face him at the same time. You understand that. Let, let me quickly call your attention to truths and then we'll, we'll go home. First of all, there will be a time when the saved have to stand before the master. In other words, the saved will face him in what we call the judgment seat of Christ. And the unsaved will face the master at the great white throne judgment. Now, the average person has the idea of, of a general judgment, you know, the average person that's not been taught in the word of God, uh, they believe that at the end of the age, uh, God is going to be uh, lining everybody up and both the saved and the unsaved, they're going to stand there. But that's not true. It's not going to be there. The saved will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We'll not be there to determine whether or not we're going to heaven. I know that right now. Right. I mean, I'm going to heaven, right? And I know that just as certain as I know I'm standing here. I mean, there's nothing could ever hinder that. Nothing I could ever do, nothing I could ever say. I mean, I've been saved by the grace of God and he's going to keep me until that day. Amen. I know that. Uh, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. If you're saved, it's already determined uh, whether you go to heaven or to hell. That was determined the minute you trusted Christ and the minute you received the Lord Jesus. And you'll, you'll face him though and you'll give an account for what you've done. Now it'll not de determine where you go, but it will determine how much you enjoy the destination. You know that? Good. If I were to uh, go down to Roanoke and get on a plane heading to L.A., once I get on that plane, it taxis down the runway, it's going to L.A. Right. Amen? But the way I act is going to determine uh, how much I enjoy L.A., you know? It's going to determine that. And uh, when a person receives Christ as Savior, that settles it. I mean, the great transaction's done. He's yeah. going to heaven. But, but, but what if he says a bad word? Well, he's still going to heaven. He just won't enjoy the trip as much. Amen? Uh, what, what if he doesn't go to church faithfully? Well, he'll still go to heaven. If he's born into the family of God by the grace of God, he will still go to heaven. And, and what if he keeps God's tie? He'll still go to heaven. He'd be ashamed, uh, you know, if he's a stumbling block to others. Still go to heaven. The judgment seat of Christ is a judgment where all of us must face God to determine the rewards we'll enjoy when we get to heaven. You know, that, that's why we ought to be careful all the time. You know that, that's why we ought to be clean and decent and ought to try to serve God and be zealous and faithful. You see, that's why we ought to say, oh God, I'm going to give you all that I have. You know why? Because someday we're going to stand before the master. Someday we are. Gehazi was still Elijah's servant. But he had to stand before the master. He still belonged to Elijah, but he had to stand before him. Now, let me say this tonight. We, we should live every moment of every day as God's people, realizing that someday we'll have to stand and hear him say, well done, well done. Wouldn't you want to hear that? The greatest conversation you'll ever have is when Jesus says, well done, thou good and faithful. Picture yourself looking at Jesus. Can you use that? And him, him looking at you. <laughs> you know, we ought to let that consume everything we do. Yeah. We ought to do it in the light that someday we got to face the master and give an account. And then there'll be an hour when the unsaved stand before the master. Amen. If you're here and you're not born in the family of God, if you've never been saved, uh, if you've never experienced a new birth, you're still going to face the master. There'll be a time and, and it'll be seven, a uh, 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 thousand and seven years after the saved stand before him. Yeah. A thousand seven years later at the end of the, of, of, of the millennial reign, the, the dead shall be raised and stand before God. The Bible said, look, look, look at it with me, if you will. 
Revelation, we'll just turn over and read a little bit before we go home. In, in, in Revelation chapter 20, uh, I believe is where I want to read from, uh, chapter 20 in the Revelation. The Bible says in verse number 11, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Verse 12 said, I saw the dead, small and great. That's the unsaved, you know. Uh, the saved people are never spoken of as dead, right. you know. Yeah. You say, well, I know some saved people that died. Well, not really, you know. They're, they're still alive somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know that? Life just continues on, maybe at a different sphere, you know. But uh, when it said, I saw the dead, small and great, that's the lost people. They stand before God and the books were opened, it says there. And, 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 and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were, were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the Bible says there in, in verse number 15, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The, those of you tonight, if you've never been saved, you listen, li listen good. If, if you've never received Jesus Christ, you've got to face the master. Right, yeah. There's going to be a time when you will face him. You say, well, what if I don't want to? It doesn't matter. You will one day face the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've never received Jesus, you've still got to face him as your master. Amen? Huh? You've, got to, you, you, you've, you've got to face him. There, there'll be a day when your name is called, when the books are open. And, and one day, can you just picture that for a moment? Just think about it. I mean, if you've not received Jesus, you will stand and look in his face. You will see the scars that on his brow put there by that crown of, of thorns. I mean, uh, you'll, you'll see the scars in his hands from his suffering for you as he shed his blood. You'll see the scars in his side where out came the blood and water from the spear. You'll see that it was all for you. Amen. Amen. Think about it. You'll see the face of him who died in your place. You'll, you'll see the face of him who gave his life that you could have life. You'll see the one who left heaven that you might uh, leave earth and go to heaven. Hmm? You'll look in his face and say, oh God, if, if, if I would uh, just believe that preacher, if I would just believe, he, he told me that I would have to be saved. And uh, he told me I would have to face God. He, he told me I would have to stand before the master and face him. He told me, and now here I am. Here I am. And, and your mind, it may be a thousand years from now. I don't know, it could be tomorrow that uh, Jesus will come. And a thousand seven years later, you stand before the master. Amen. And, and uh, when, when, when uh, you stand there, your mind will wander back to this day. I really believe when you stand before, if you're not saved and you stand before the master at the white throne of judgment, your mind will wander back September the 3rd, 2023. That preacher said I'd be here. He told me that he'd be here. He, he reminded me, you must face the master. You must face the master. He said it over and over again. And uh, you'll say, he said it and now I'm here. He told me and now I'm right here. And over and over. Uh, uh, you're, because your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. Listen, sinner friend, I don't, I don't know uh, who you may be. But I can see you just standing before him lost. Can you picture that? Oh, Master, here, here I am. Is your name written in the book? Well, I went to church. I went to church faithful. I went to church ever since I was a kid. Well, is your name in the book? Well, they, they sprinkled me. It was an Easter Sunday morning. They told me about it time and time again, how I was christened into the church, you know. And, uh, well, that didn't get your name written in the book of life. 
Well, preacher, later on, I was baptized. A Baptist preacher took me down to the river, and, and I was baptized, and, and I, I lived most of my life in the church. I tithed. I supported missionaries and all of that. But is your name in the book of life? That's all that's going to matter then. All that's going to matter. You'll, you'll bow your head. and You'll say, well, I, I never took time to get born again. I never took time to do that. I thought that was, that was sort of old-fashioned anyway. Most churches don't mention it. I never thought I'd, I needed that. I never took time to get born either. The Bible said that your body and soul will be cast. That, that, that word cast means hurled. Your body and soul will be hurled like, like you would hurl a ball, uh, you know, uh, into the lake of fire, thrown into the, the face of torment. Think about it. Huh? Burn, cry, and die in the lake of fire and brimstone forever and forever and forever. From one age to the next age, right on throughout eternity in the lake of fire. Why? Simply because you did not take time to prepare to meet your master. Simply that reason. Listen. You've got to face God. Huh? How can we? Uh, do you understand? You've got to face God. You've got to. The Bible says there in verse 25, he went in and stood before his master. That's just a simple statement. But each one of us will stand before the master. Each one. Save people. Judgment seat of Christ. To hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joys of the Lord. Or the great white throne, hear him say, I never knew you. Cast him, hurl him, thrust him out into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Day and night, forever and forever. Hey, don't, don't allow that to happen. Don't do that. If you're here tonight and you've never been saved, you're here tonight, you've never been born again. You don't know that your name's written in the book of life. I would plead with you to trust Jesus tonight. Take him as your Savior. The pastor's going to come, and uh, maybe they'll sing a song of invitation, give you an opportunity. You can stand before him tonight as a sinner seeking salvation, and he'll save you. Amen. Then you'll never face the white throne. Amen. Whatever. Let's stand, if you will. As we stand together, I don't know. I know a few people's names here. And some of you exhibit the traits of salvation. The fact is, all of you are nice, sweet people. But I wonder who would be here tonight. And you'd have to say, Preacher, I've, I've never received Christ. Just put it off, neglected, but I've never received Christ as my Savior. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. If you've never been saved, today you ought to trust him. Brother Raider. Amen. Number 464 tonight, our song of invitation. Listen, Brother Lane's down front. If you're not saved, listen. Uh, you don't want to stand before the Lord uh, empty-handed. You don't want to stand before the Lord without uh, knowing Christ. And uh, so tonight, you make that decision. You decide, uh, am I going to trust Christ tonight, or am I going to face my master and hear him say, depart, I never knew you. Amen? On this first stanza, if you will, 464. Amen? No. Dear friend, are you sure you're saved? Sure heaven is your home? Sure sins are forgiven? However you want to put it. It's not a question of if I stand before the master. It's just a question of when I stand before the master. Where will I stand? As a saved person at the judgment seat? Or will I stand before the great white throne judgment? Listen tonight, come. As a child of God. Are you ready to meet your God? You ready to stand before the Lord? You like Gehazi? 
just trying to make excuses. Preventing the least of his favor. Oh, listen. When you get away from God, I heard a preacher say one time, when you get away from God as a child of God, anything's possible. Hmm? But you will face your master one day. Are you, as a child of God, going to go empty-handed? As a child of God, will you... Come to the judgment seat of Christ and, and say, Lord, I, I sure messed up, didn't I? And you'll be saved by his fire. But yet, how many crowns am I going to throw at the master's feet? Oh, it's going to be a glorious day. But if you're lost, you'll have eternity to think about it. Have eternity to regret the when the Spirit spoke to you. You need to settle that now. You need to go forward. You need to talk to Brother Lane. You need to talk to the preacher. Oh, I'll get her someday. Oh, you know, I'm a young person. Uh, I know a lot of old people that died without Christ, but they always had good intentions. Hmm can't work your way, you can't get there. You need to think about what's been said. He stood before the master, his master. Man, you're going to do that. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the message, for the messenger. We pray your blessings upon what has been said. May it find lodging in every heart. May we as your children, Lord, be determined that when we stand before you, we're going to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy that has been prepared for you. For that one that's here tonight, wrestling with eternity, wrestling with heaven and hell, may this be the night that they settle it and just simply come to Jesus for salvation. And Lord, we just thank you for all you've done. Pray you'll help us as we go this week to be mindful of the need of everyone around us, and that is Jesus Christ. And we love you. We thank you. You Just pray you'll bless Brother Floyd and Miss Jackie. And Lord, continue to supply their needs, meet them. And Lord, use them in a way that would be certainly pleasing to thee. And we'll love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Amen. Amen.